My name is Amber Carson, and I'm the Girl Leadership and Awards Coordinator with Girl Scouts of Western Pennsylvania. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the virtual Gold Award Court of Awards. This year has been tough on everyone, and while we wish we could be celebrating with you in person, we're so excited to honor each Gold Award Girl Scout's determination and dedication in making the world a better place. Please join me in reciting the Girl Scout Promise and Law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authorities, use resources wisely, and make the world a better place, and be a sister to every girl spell. On my honor, I will try to serve God in my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. Hi, I'm Amelia, and I would like to recite the Girl Scout Law and share what it means to me. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Girl Scouts of the United States of America was created more than 100 years ago when Julia Gordon Lowe created an organization in America that would encourage girls of her time and future generations to explore beyond a woman's traditional roles by venturing into the outdoors, 
developing self-reliance, cultivating her own resourcefulness, and becoming active citizens in the world at large. Today, our program is 2.5 million strong, 1.7 million girls and 750,000 adults who believe in the power of every girl to change the world. Research indicates that over 50 million women today were Girl Scouts in their youth, including nearly 60% of the women elected to the 117th U.S. Congress, 52% of all female business owners, as well as scientific researchers, stars in the entertainment industry, and several astronauts. The Girl Scouts honored today in this council, in this country, are all part of the international sisterhood that reaches 10 million girls and young women in 150 countries. Within Girl Scouting, the Gold Award is the highest award a Girl Scout can earn, and it is certainly earned. Each girl begins by completing prerequisites designed to help her grow as a leader by discovering passions and strengths within themselves and connecting to their community and the world around them. Then the heavy lifting starts. Girls plan, organize, and implement a Gold Award project. With a commitment of at least 80 hours, each girl must go beyond her Girl Scout sisterhood and into her community to discover an issue that she is passionate about while correcting and providing a solution for it that will outlast her project. The Girl Scout Gold Award truly embodies the mission of our organization to build girls of courage, confidence, and character while making the world a better place. 56 girls in Western Pennsylvania will be honored today as the 2020 class Gold Award class. Welcome to the 2020 Gold Award Court of Awards Ceremony. My name is Patricia Burkhardt and I am the Chief Executive Officer at Girl Scouts Western Pennsylvania. I always look forward to this annual event where I normally get to meet Gold Award Girl Scouts, their families, and mentors. While we can't gather in person this year, I am no less inspired by these girls and their amazing stories about how they've made their communities better. I bet you'll be inspired too as you learn more about their Gold Award projects during this broadcast. Earning the Girl Scout Gold Award takes hard work, dedication, and leadership. The Girl Scouts you'll hear about today all possess these characteristics, and we also know that standing behind every great young leader is a steadfast community, supporting her every step of the way. First, we'd like to thank the parents and troop leaders who have supported our Girl Scouts through, throughout their Girl Scout experience and earning the Gold Award. From the day she entered Girl Scouts until now, you've played the biggest roles in shaping her leadership journey. Next, I would like to recognize the project advisors. These are the professionals in the community who work directly with the Gold Award Girl Scouts. They provide in-depth knowledge and instrumental guidance along the way. Thank you for believing in these young leaders. Lastly, I would like to recognize some of our most dedicated and passionate volunteers who together fold, form the Girl Scout Gold Award Committee. These volunteers from across our council mentored the young women being honored today from the initial project proposal all the way through to becoming Gold Award Girl Scout. Thank you for all you do to support Girl Scouts and the highest awards. To the girls we celebrate today, congratulations on earning the highest award in Girl Scouting. On behalf of all of us at GSWPA, we are very proud of you and can't wait to see what you accomplish next. May the promise you've made as Girl Scout continue to guide you along whatever path you choose. It's time to get the celebration and the inspiration started. Hi, I'm Senator Tammy Duckworth. When I think of Girl Scouts, I think of service. I think of hard work. I think of a commitment to making the community and the country around you a better place, no matter how old you are or how many badges you've earned. As a Senator, I have one of the best jobs in the world. I get to wake up every day and use the leadership lessons I learned as a Girl Scout to fight for the next generation of girls. I get to pass policies to help more of today's young women get the opportunities they need to become Gold Award Girl Scouts or even members of Congress tomorrow. The Gold Award requires girls to show their leadership skills by taking action on a community or global issue. In other words, it instills in them the importance of public service. It shows girls that they can do anything, be anything, and help anyone, and that no glass ceiling is strong enough to keep them down. It certainly taught me that. I remember the lessons I learned in my Girl Scout uniform when I put on my Army uniform years later. 
even when I raised my right hand and took the oath of office here just a few years ago. And now I'm doing my best to instill the courage, confidence, and character that the Girl Scouts taught me and my own daughters as well. So thank you for working to make your community a better place and for knowing that every girl can change the world. The lost cause. The ignored. The impossible. Meet your match. A Go To World Girl Scout identifies a big problem, creates a project, and takes the steps to solve that problem. We stand out because we stand for more. Gold Award Girl Scouts don't just change the world for the better, we change it for good. Like the Gold Award Girl Scouts, each Gold Award project is unique. This year we had five projects that tackled animal care, preservation, and education. Six projects that involve children's issues, disabilities, education, and improving care for the elderly. Our Gold Award Girl Scouts implemented seven projects that helped to preserve art, culture, and heritage, four projects to improve the environment and sustainability, six projects dealt with health and wellness, three brought STEM education to the community, and six were sports focused. Rounding out this year's projects included work with civic engagement, poverty, and public safety. Each project incorporated special challenges and special rewards with over 4,480 hours of work in the community. It is my pleasure to introduce Gold Award Girl Scout speakers today that will share with us some of the insights and accomplishments of their Gold Award project. Please welcome Emma Bogdan and Julia Cassiotti. <laughs> As a young girl, my parents would take me and my little brother to polka festivals and dances across the United States. At first, I was not a huge fan of it. However, over the years, it has become a genre of music that I love. It is a music that connects me to my heritage and the countless ancestors who came before me. This music is the thread that has connected so many generations. Yet, as I looked around at the demographic of the dances and festivals that I was attending, I noticed that the popular of the people who were there were aging, which threatened the survival of the music. At the same time, I was contemplating, what can I do for my Go to Work project? What is something that I'm passionate about? Wanting the thread that ties me to my past to continue for future generations, I set about trying to educate the youth about polka music and the Polish culture. I went on to create my own international, internet-based polka radio show called The Polka Loving Girl, which airs on the Polka Jammer Network, so I could further promote this music that I love to a younger population. I also presented at Hain Middle School's Cultural Day, where I taught students, staff, and administration about the Polish culture and how to polka. In addition to this presentation, I also taught the girls who attended Cranberry Area's Thinking Day how to polka and the different ways they could get involved in the polka industry. In April of this year, I received a phone call from the United States Polka Association and was notified that out of approximately 70 disc and internet jockeys across the country, the Polka Loving Girl was voted to be one of the three finalists for the association's IJ DJ of the Year Award. Being nominated for this award gave validation that I am making a difference. It is because of Girl Scouts and the Gold Award that I even considered keeping the music I love alive for future generations. However, it was not always easy. I often struggled with time management as my workload would increase during the school year. This is a challenge I still face today while my show continues in college because I'm taking harder classes and with a larger course load and taking on leadership roles in various clubs. Another challenge with a pre-recorded radio show is talking to tens of thousands of people while also talking to no one. It is difficult to have a conversation with an audience that is not right in front of you. In addition to the Gold Award, Girl Scouts has made a large impact in shaping the person I am today. With my troop, we camped, hiked, ziplined, learned to shoot bow and arrow, shotguns and muzzle loaders. We went to the theater, toured museums, traveled to Cleveland, and attended the 2017 National Girl Scout Jamboree, visited the Great Smoky Mountains, just to name a few. Whether creating an entry into the PPG Gingerbread Competition, 
coming up with an itinerary and budget for our trips, or planning presentations for our Girl Scout journeys, we learn to work as a team. Through all of this and so much more, Girl Scouts has taught that opportunities are only limited by your imagination. You just have to be willing to put in the effort to reach them. It has surrounded me with a group of women, each strong leaders in their own right, who inspired me on a regular basis and who taught me the benefits of pushing oneself out of one's comfort zone. By this motivation, I had the amazing opportunity to serve as the director's assistant at the Cranberry Area Day Camp for three consecutive years and have developed a love for leadership roles ever since. Girl Scouts has also provided me with a platform for my future career. After 12 years of selling Girl Scout cookies, developing relationships with customers, and setting and achieving sales goals, I came to the realization that marketing is what I want to do for my career. I'm currently studying marketing and business management at Duquesne University. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak before you today, and I would like to congratulate each and every one of you for achieving this high honor. You are what gives me inspiration and on a daily basis. Good afternoon to GSWPA board members, regional executive directors, council executives, troop leaders, Gold Award Girl Scouts, and guests. My name is Julie Kishadi, and I am a lifelong Girl Scout and 12-year member of Troop 42043 of Altoona, Pennsylvania. I would not be here today without the love and support of my family, my fellow troop members, countless members of the community, but most importantly, my one and only troop leader, who also happens to be my mom. Mom, thank you for everything. I know there were times it was hard and times that it would have been easier to just hang it up, but you persisted. And boy, am I glad that you did because I have seen firsthand the positive effect that your volunteerism has had on so many. For all the scouts and parents viewing this today, I want you to take a minute and think about all of the leaders here or elsewhere that have had an impact on your life. These fierce leaders dedicate themselves year in and year out to helping girls grow into confident, creative young women. Think about how these leaders are there to help scouts to experience new challenges and gain new skills for the future. Think about the amount of time the leaders devote to preparing for the meetings, fundraising, and year-end activities, all while balancing family, work, and other commitments. They truly make a difference in our lives. My life has been completely altered by being a Girl Scout but no project or experience has had a greater impact on me than my Gold Award. I started my Gold Award project about two years ago, but originally I've had the idea brewing for quite some time. Anyone that knows me knows I'm a very big Notre Dame fan. So back in eighth grade, I was blessed to have had the opportunity to take a class trip to South Bend. In my opinion, it's the most beautiful campus in the world, famous for many attractions, but I have to say that the Grotto of Our Lady of Lords is my favorite. Experiencing, experiencing the grotto firsthand and the way all of the students and visitors treated it with such reverence and respect, I know it was something I wanted to bring back to my school and community at large. Being a Girl Scout all my life, there was no question about what my gold award would be. Notre Dame holds a special place in my heart, so it just made sense to bring that special place back home. Mary, the Blessed Mother, who serves as a protector of life and family, has touched my life in many, many ways. As a young Catholic woman, I look to Mary, our mother, as the perfect role model for all women. She fulfills a leadership role that's immeasurable, and I try to always incorporate her virtues into my life by not shying away from my faith. So with that being said, I think it speaks volumes and really is a testament to the faith of our community to have had such an impactful project. The response was quite overwhelming. My initial estimate of cost was approximately $10,000, to include a three to four foot statue of the Blessed Mother. The final estimated cost of my project is valued at over $35,000. That included a 12 foot rock wall and a nine foot statue of the Virgin Mary. At the site dedication in August of 2019, I pointed out that it was a successful end to a big project, but more importantly, it marked the beginning of something new in our community. Not only was this a job well done, but also a job well begun. The challenge laid before us now is to stand strong in our faith, to take it out in the open as Pope Francis tells us, and serve God how he has and continues to serve us. 
Over the course of my project, I have had the privilege of participating in and leading my team in various capacities, but I don't think I ever quite realized how grateful I should be for such opportunities. Many took a chance on me and allowed me to learn and grow personally and spiritually alongside them, as well as gave me independence to pursue my own path. That helped me to make the transition from an inexperienced high school student to an independent adult. While working on this project, I knew my place within the team and as an inexperienced high school student, I was timid at first. Then later on, as I grew more confident, I realized that having an opinion was better than not having one at all. I was lucky enough to be able to discuss issues that were important to me with all of my advisors who explained why my views were wrong or why my ideas were good when, they were the case, when that was the case. I appreciated not only the criticism, but also the praise. Looking back, I realized that I am grateful for the opportunity to grow as a part of a team, but I never realized how lucky I was to have so many people invest so much in my project. I again appreciate how much other people have supported and helped me. I continue to be amazed at the level of confidence they have placed in my ability to get this project finished. Having so many have the confidence in my abilities has been a very powerful motivator for me to lead others in much the same way. Once a Girl Scout, always a Girl Scout. Thank you again to everyone watching this today. It's truly been a blessing, blessing to share my experience with all of you. Thanks. <laughs>
I also created a website with this information as a resource for women to learn about self-defense and when to stay alert and be aware of their surroundings. I led a team of volunteers to put up informational placards about local birds on hiking trails in my community. To help even more people learn about the unique birds in my location, I created a video and website as a resource. Anna collected and transcribed oral histories from Johnstown's Jewish community members. Her work catalogs a piece of history that was at risk of being lost. Anna also published the transcriptions on a website to be accessible for future researchers. Haley advocated for and educated the public on the importance of therapy dogs by completing therapy training with her own dog. Her dog, Buzzy, is now able to visit people as an official therapy dog and provide comfort to those who need it. Rachel discovered a need in her community that she could support with her talents and interests. She partnered with Community Cafe that offers healthy meals with a pay-what-you-can option to construct an herb garden and create promotional and directional signage. To acknowledge and support teens in my community who struggle with stress, anxiety, and depression, I took the true story of my little sister's struggle and created a dance piece. I then hosted a booth at the community fair and used this information to teach my community about the ways to cope with stress, anxiety, and depression. I organized and led a multifaceted plan to benefit the pollinators and wildlife in my community, which included constructing bat houses and bee boxes. I led volunteers to remove an invasive plant species and create a vernal pool for amphibians. To educate the youth in my community, I donated a picture book and informative bookmarks to the children's section of my local library. I shared the story of a local historical figure, Charlotte E. Battles. I created a home tour where this woman lived using her belongings to highlight the accomplished woman's life and successes. I developed a docent guide by interviewing community members and conducting research at the local historical society. As someone who has suffered from concussions, Miranda held seminars at her local library to educate the community on concussions. Additionally, she created a website to house all of her research and information to be a continuing resource. Grace held a month-long volleyball camp for girls in 6th through 8th grade to help introduce them to a new sport and increase their interest in the sport. The school district doesn't offer the sport at this age for a long duration, and she wanted the girls to have the opportunity to grow their skills in a meaningful way. Participants learned basic skills of volleyball and strategies of playing a team sport. To help protect the monarch butterfly population from habitat loss, Emily Rose created a monarch butterfly garden in the sensory courtyard at her school. She raised caterpillars, released the butterflies, and taught about the life cycle and habits of the species to the life skills students and fellow Girl Scouts. She also wrote a book about the butterfly garden ecosystem. One copy is in the life skills classroom and one copy is in the school library. I highlighted bullying and the impact by facilitating an anti-bullying week at my school that featured different themes on ways to be kind. I also installed three buddy benches in my community as enduring resources for inclusivity and kindness. When a homeless shelter in Pittsburgh purchased a new location for their donation center, I stepped up to coordinate donations from the community in local stores for shelving units, storage bins, and clothing hangers. I created a plan to efficiently organize storage rooms, sorting rooms, and the retail shopping area, and led a team of volunteers to execute my plan. For my gold award project, I painted the school logo on the wall of the rifle range. I did this in order to inspire others and promote school and team spirit. I organized small groups to give speeches and pass out brochures to the incoming freshman homerooms. I chose this project because I love all aspects of the rifle team, and I want others to discover a love for the sport as well. I developed a four-session science camp for girls in elementary school to spark their interest in the subject. Each session featured educational and hands-on experiments and demonstrations in biology, chemistry, environmental science, and physics. 
Sarah renovated an 18th century carpenter shop that was located at a local museum but unopened to the public. She used her knowledge of the machine tool technology to repair a foot-powered treadle lathe from the era and identified artifacts and tools in the shop. By leading her team of volunteers, she was able to restore the space and open it to her community. To maintain a local park as a resource for her community, Alicia led a team of volunteers to implement a much-needed restoration project. In addition to adding new plants and pulling weeds, she and her team were able to rebuild the playground and replace benches, as well as install new nets on the tennis court and rims and nets on the basketball hoops. To encourage the youth in her community to read and reduce their time in front of the screens, Brianna created a book swap library at her church's farmer's market. She and her team gathered books, helped children pick out books, and led activities during the farmer's market. Clara initialized and executed the first gluten-free expo in Pittsburgh to raise awareness of celiac disease and locally available gluten-free products. Attendees were able to sample and purchase products from vendors, as well as to learn about the new technologies that can detect gluten in food. My passion for the environment inspired me to educate others on the importance of solitary bees as pollinators. By partnering with the Pittsburgh Botanical Garden, I conducted workshops over the course of a week during the summer that included crafts, activities, and education that focused on solitary bees. I also presented my research to elementary school students. To empower and showcase the talents of the volleyball athletes at her school, Hannah launched, planned, and executed a volleyball tournament. She handled details from the concession stand to hiring tournament officials in an effort to introduce the junior varsity team members to new skills and strategies, as well as to highlight the talents of the female athletes, which had previously been underappreciated. To support her fellow students, Paige implemented a peer tutoring and mentoring program at her school that would alleviate the stress and fear of asking for academic help. To best support the academic needs of students, she created a screening process for tutoring and establishing a schedule. Knowing that many struggle to afford medical necessities, I created a medical equipment lending closet. I coordinated donations, cleaned and organized the equipment, and verified the safety of each item with a professional. I designed and built the closet, including hanging and shelving units. Once the closet was complete, I implemented a promotional campaign that included speaking to many community leaders about the resource. Tamara helped reformat and redesign the annual Vacation Bible School program to engage young children in her faith. She led children in her community through various lessons under the theme, Superheroes of the Bible. I hosted eight sessions of a four-week-long music program for homeschooled elementary age children. I based my lesson plans on concepts of music therapy to help improve life skills like patience, teamwork, and confidence. I taught the children songs, dances, and games, and led them in crafts. Each week, I introduced a new musical guest who led an activity and taught the children about a different instrument. To raise awareness for the local community pool and food pantry as resources available through her community center, Phoebe hosted public events that centered on these resources. She hosted a pool party to promote the use of the public school and an art walk that promoted the local food pantry to raise awareness and usage. I worked with local organizations to gather information on federal and state resources that offer assistance to new mothers who may be facing financial struggles. I contacted and partnered with large companies and existing community resources to assemble fully equipped diaper bags for mothers in need in my area. Rebecca launched her sleeping mat concept to provide a resource for those who need it while also helping the environment. With her team, Rebecca cut, folded, and crocheted plastic bags together to create four foot by six foot sleeping mats. These sleeping mats were then distributed to the local homeless community. I organized and developed two eight-week-long research-based conservation programs for fourth and fifth graders at local elementary schools. Each week, students were encouraged to investigate different topics regarding current threats to marine life, including plastic pollution in the ocean, climate change impact on coral reefs, and the effects of the endangerment of top predators on the marine food web. 
After traveling through Girl Scouts, I set out to educate my community on different cultures to increase inclusivity and demonstrate that we are all connected. Over the course of three sessions, I educated my community on history, art, food, and customs from various cultures around the world. To inspire interest in technology, Kara educated youth in her community about computation thinking by hosting her own computer-free Hour of Code and volunteering at events at her local public library and elementary school. She also designed and produced a children's board game that incorporated educational components of basic coding concepts. She donated the pieces she developed to her Girl Scout community as resources to help younger girls learn the basics of coding and computer technology as they earn their coding and robotics badges. Maya introduced younger students to the art and skills of Color Guard, part of the band that performs with flags. After noticing that many girls don't have the skills prior to tryouts, she created a three-day class for interested students to attend to help them learn and prepare for tryouts. I renovated a local pavilion where I previously enjoyed operating Girl Scout camps to help others to continue to enjoy the community resource. I cleaned and painted nearby girls, added a new picnic table, and repainted two others to match applied new paint to the whole pavilion, or removed graffiti from the chimney and replaced it with a mural. By partnering with a local animal shelter, I educated my community on cattle population. I led a class for children at the animal shelter, led a donation drive for the shelter, supported their adoption events, and made a map of the feral cats they found in the community to reduce the feral cat population. Maya organized and led community workshops to teach others how to make cat toys from recycled common household items. The toys were donated to a local animal shelter to support their efforts and to help others learn how to make cat toys that are fun, inexpensive, and environmentally friendly. Stephanie created a community garden at her high school as a tool to teach youth about the importance of nutrition and exercise. Crops yielded from the garden will be donated to local senior citizens and the community food bank. Kimberly partnered with community leaders to expand her town's Memorial Day annual event to include four new large groups of participants. She also led the day of logistics of the parade and created a program outline for the service following the parade. As part of her work to build the celebration, she also repainted flower pots for the streets of her community. For my project, I built and delivered a financial literacy program designed for elementary school age children in my community. I taught basic money management skills through games and role-playing interactions to help children break down the larger concepts into a life skill that was relatable and understandable. To help educate my community on local plants and animals, I painted a mural at a local nature center. The mural shows numerous fauna and flora and was a way for me to use my passion for art to enhance my community. I created a resource that would help others navigate the process of choosing a college or university to pursue their education. Through the creation of a four-part video series and in-person presentations, I used my own research to prepare others for their next step. Emily built a community bocce court to support the local bocce league who needed a new court due to increased interest. To celebrate the accomplishment of the construction project, Emily organized and co-chaired a tournament for her community. When Caitlin noticed a lack of concern in her community for the local environment, she created an environmental educational trail in the wetlands area of her community park by installing signs. The signs promoted awareness of the environment and how to protect it. For my gold award, I decided to start a running program for sixth graders to give them an opportunity to get into better shape over the summer. Participants met five days a week for two weeks and worked on setting and reaching their goal of running a 5K at the end of the program. The club focused on getting them in better shape for cross country, running, or any other sports they were in. Ashley organized two water safety days for children ages four through 10, where the children could learn essential and basic skills of swimming and water safety. The parents and guardians were also educated on the basic methods of CPR and other life-saving skills. Emily educated her community on PennDOT's Yellow Dot program, which provides a way for incapacitated drivers to communicate their emergency medical information in the event of an accident or other emergency. She hosted booths at community events and coordinated with local emergency first responders involved in the program. 
In an effort to give back to an organization that has brought value to my life, I designed and created a website for a church family retreat. I identified that an improved site would attract new families to the retreat, and I used colorful photos, modern design, and online registration to accomplish this goal. I hosted a two-day event at a local continuing care retirement facility in my community. At the event, I shared Asian customs and culture with the residents, including games, snacks, and musical and dancing performances. I also folded 1,000 paper cranes that will be displayed in a permanent art feature in the facility. I created and taught a series of ballet classes to strengthen the minds and bodies of senior citizens at a local senior living facility. Through connecting repetitive patterns of choreography with rhythms, I provided an uplifting dance environment to support those who may have felt anxious, depressed, or frustrated due to memory loss. To combine my passion to support mental health of others and my love of art, I designed a three-day art as therapy workshop to help middle school students relieve stress in a positive way. I led the participants to work on zentangles, mandalas, collages, and more, but instructed them to focus on how they felt while creating their art rather than how good they were at each lesson. I designed, hosted, and led free classes throughout my community on how to manage stress with healthy movement, natural facial treatments, and water consumption. I delivered the classes at several local libraries to different kinds of participants, including foster parents, senior citizens, and children with special needs. Emma created an orienteering course for a local environmental educational center. Her course will connect students to the outdoors and create a learning opportunity of an important outdoor skill. Congratulations to all the Gold Award Girl Scouts. You are truly a group of remarkable young women. Your family, your friends, and your Girl Scout sisters are proud of you and what you have accomplished. Our Gold Award Girl Scouts received a special package in the mail earlier this month. This included a gold candle. Long ago, when Juliet Lowe held one of the first candle lighting ceremonies in Girl Scouting, she told the girls to take their candles home and use them in candle lighting ceremonies to pass the flame to others. The candles that you were given are special. They have been lit for the first time before this gathering. If you look at your candle, you'll see the wick is black. That is what is left of the old flame. When you relight your candle, you will share the flame with your sisters today. But you should also remember the flames of Girl Scouts from the past who held candle lighting ceremonies much like this, all the way back to the time of Juliet Gordon Lowe. When your candle burns down, be sure to use it to light a new candle. In this way, you will be able to continue the tradition. In a candle lighting ceremony, we are not only sharing a link to our past, but the light is also a symbol of our hopes and dreams for the future of Girl Scouting. Just as a tiny flame is passed from person to person, growing brighter and brighter as more candles are lit, it is as Juliet Lowe's dream was that Girl Scouts would be a bright beacon for girls everywhere. May we all keep her dream alive forever. In the same way that Juliet Lowe passed the light on to her Girl Scouts long ago, we are passing this light on to you. The candle you hold was lit from a candle that was lit from a candle and so back to one which was lit by Juliet Gordon Lowe. This candle and its flame is a bridge from the founder of Girl Scouts to us today. A single flame carried through the years to burn with the same purpose of spirit and love to all who embark on the adventure of being a Girl Scout. I pass this flame on to you as it has been passed on to me to remember why we stay in Girl Scouting. Girl Scout Challenge. Everyone who has earned their gold award, first class or curve board is invited to stand and join in this challenge. Ladies, since you've earned your Girl Scout Gold Award, I invite you to take this challenge based on the Girl Scout Law and make the Girl Scout Gold Award Pledge. I challenge you as Gold Award Girl Scouts to accept this award in this spirit in which it was given to you. Know that with this award comes responsibility. As you join this group of accomplished women, you will be regarded with honor and respect. Live your life worthy of this honor. Live your life by the principles of the Girl Scout law. 
I challenge you to be honest and fair in all the dealings in this world. Always remain true to yourself and guard your personal honor. I challenge you to be friendly and helpful to everyone. Celebrate with the diversities of your fellow human beings and seek the improvements of life of others. I challenge you to be courageous and caring to all. Always treat others with respect. I challenge you to be courageous and strong. Share your courage with others, especially those weaker than you. I challenge you to be responsible for what you say and do. Act so that it reflects well on you, your family, and your community. I challenge you to respect yourself as well as others. Strive in excellence in all that you do. I challenge you to respect authority. Be mindful of your responsibilities as well as your rights as a citizen of this great nation. I challenge you to use resources wisely. Do not waste your abilities, your time, or your talent. I challenge you to make the world a better place. By your words, actions, deeds, you can make a difference. I challenge you to be a sister to every Girl Scout. Do your best to give back to the Girl Scouting that which has been given to you by so many. If you accept this Gold Award Challenge, repeat after me. I am honored to have earned the Girl Scout Gold Award. I am honored that the highest award in Girl Scouting has been entrusted to me. I affirm my dedication to live my life by the Girl Scout promise. I affirm my commitment to live my life by the Girl Scout law. Congratulations to all these young women who have earned the Girl Scout Gold Award. As you have heard, the work of one Gold Award Girl Scout is quite remarkable, and it is an honor to celebrate and recognize the impact of so many dedicated, intelligent young women. While many of our words have been in congratulations of your hard work, we would also like to say thank you. Thank you for creating change in the world, for bringing a solution to the table, and for helping where you saw that you could. The benefits and ripples produced by your commitment spread much farther than you will ever see. A Girl Scout always leaves a place better than she found it, and you have done just that. We cannot wait to see what you do next. Also, our thanks to all of you for participating in the recognition of these outstanding young ladies. This concludes our ceremony. Thank you so much for joining us.